grab those pencils and let's get started. The first thing that I'm going to do with this coat is I'm going to take the permanent red or whatever colour that you're using and with light pressure I'm going to come around the top of this collar. So we've got a few pinky bits that are going to come over here and I'm going to go in with perhaps the crimson or the light magenta to put those in, the colours that we've already used in the face. But I just want to get a nice coverage of this. And I've just realised I've missed a bit out of the line drawing there. So I'm just going to draw that up. He's got like a dip there. So I'll just draw that into there. And just really lightly bring, start to bring this, this colour in. Just into this dip area, I'm going to go in with really light, and this is all really light pressure. We want to use really light pressure for all of this. I'm going to come into this dip area of this fabric and I'm going to come in with the Caput Morton Violet from the Polychromos range. And just start to put a little bit of that dip into there and also into this bit, just along this line. I said I was going to come in with a bit of the crimson. I'm going to come in with a bit of the crimson in here. We've got a little bit of crimson sort of showing through this bit of hair here. And I've got a bit of hair here, so I'm just starting to shape that a little bit. And there's a bit of this crimson colour that we've already used up on the top of here. Really light pressure. So my permanent red that I've just put down, that's more of my orangey red. So where I put that in, I'm going to be putting that in where I can see sort of more oranges. And then I'm coming in with the, uh, the scarlet where I want the red to be a bit deeper. So I'm coming over all of this, including the Caput Morton that we've put down. I'm coming over all of this area with this scarlet now to blend it a little bit. And it will take a little bit of time to do this coat. It will take quite a little bit of blending. I'm going to go back with that permanent red. I want to blend some of the tooth out, but I don't necessarily want to get rid of all of this tooth in every area of this coat because it's actually, the tooth of the pastel mat will actually sort of help with the velvety sort of texture of the coat. So I will leave it in in areas. I'm going in with the crimson alizarin and I'm just adding this down into the darker area, blending this up towards that lighter area. Obviously we want to get the darker bits down where this crease is. Before we continue, I've just got time to mention that if you're looking for more tutorials this festive season, you might like to join me over on Patreon. You'll find over 140 hours of pet portrait and animal theme tutorials that you can work through and I add more every month. Okay, let's get back to Santa. I want to come into this area as well with the purple violet that we've used before. We used it on... Uh, Santa's face and we used it a bit in his hat. It's quite a bluey sort of purple so even though this is quite grey around here it's got the um, it's got this tint of, of purple in here. I'm going to put a bit of the magenta in there as well. Light magenta and I'm I, um, I tend to sort of have all the pencils sort of bunched up in my hand as I'm at working on big areas like this. So you'll probably hear pencils clicking and, um, and moving around a bit. And then I'm going to, and I'm going to blend that out with a little bit of the Bista around this curl. And just use a bit of the warm grey three as well. Bring that over this coat, this, this bit of hair. Just going to blend that with 
either a paper stump or a paintbrush, whatever you've got, whatever you want to use. Just add a little bit of texture into this lovely curl we've got here. And just bring a bit of this darkness in on the edge of this, uh, this coat as well, this collar. I'm going to come into the darkest bit of this crease with a bit of the walnut, walnut brown from the polychromos. Blend that out. And then back over the top with a bit of the uh, Caput Morton Violet. So the other colour that I'm going to be using to uh, blend, which I forgot to mention actually, is uh, pink white. I'll be using the pink white in this area as well. The pink white is uh, a colour that there isn't really a great sort of substitution uh, for in the polychromos range. If you don't have the pink white, um, I would go with the beige red. I'd use the beige red. I'll just use it here to show you. But I would use the beige red. It's a little bit darker, but you're still going to get that sort of uh, nice blend. Perhaps might use a bit of white as well. Just going on back over the top of that with the, the permanent red. And I'm just going to take the, the crimson and just take that up slightly on the edges, just tiny little bits on the edges, just to create that little bit of fur texture on the edge of his coat. Do that with a permanent red as well here. Tiny little bits, that's all, just tiny little bits. I want to come into this area with a little bit of Payne's Grey around, around this purpley bit. So I'm just going in with a bit of Payne's Grey here. And then just to finish that off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the white Pablo and just sort of bring the white hair over the top. There's quite a dark bit down here I've just noticed and I'm just going to put this in I'm going in with the Payne's Grey down here take that dark bit around the edge of that coat so I'm going to come on to the next bit I'm going back in with the permanent red again this time and I'm just sort of doing it in sections I find that it's going to be easier to do something like this that's got lots of sections. I'm just going to do them in sections and that way I can sort of remember where I am. So I'm coming in with this permanent red again. I'm just putting a nice even coverage. And I mean it doesn't have to be exact but I'm, I'm roughly sort of looking where I am on the, the reference photograph. So this time we've got a few more sort of creases and, uh, and bits in uh, this one. So I'm coming straight in with this uh, Crimson Alizarin. And I'm going to plot in these darker bits. And I don't want to go straight in and plot it in with, you know, really dark colour. Because if I've got this wrong, I can just sort of adjust it really. I can, this uh, Alizarin Crimson, it's dark enough, but it's not. It's not too dark. So I can start to go in with a Caput Mortem Violet and start to darken down and build up these darker bits that I've just sort of plotted in. And I'm going between circular strokes if I can't see any sort of direction and then these sort of directional strokes if I can. So for instance, I can see that there's a curve shaping around there. So I'm just shaping it with the pencil. Flicking the pencil out from the darker part of the crease out into the lighter part of the crease. Uh, coming back over this area with the permanent red and just using circular strokes. And this is going to take quite a while to do this coat. But the techniques that I'm going to use on one crease or one sort of folder material are going to be very similar to the techniques that uh, I use on the rest of the coat really. There'll be slightly different techniques that will come down on the arm. 
where we've got slightly different looking uh, fur increases. Uh, but up here, it'll be pretty much the same. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to show you how I do a couple of creases. And then I shall time lapse the rest of it, just so that you can see it come together. But that we don't have to, uh, you don't have to spend lots of time watching the video. You can just sort of get on with it and you know work at your own pace because that's the easiest way to work on fabric like this. Just grab a cup of tea or a cup of coffee and just sit and work on it for a few hours at a time. And before you know it, you'll have the coat finished. So I'm just going over this area with the uh, the permanent the permanent red and then I want to come back in with the crimson alizarin and just bring bring some darker areas in and I'm just going to soften this crease a little bit on the edge of this this crease here because the crease is there so the darker area is there but it's just ever so slightly softened it's not a harsh line just using this crimson alizarin to put a little bit of shape into this fabric and I don't need to worry about particularly sharp pencils the pencils aren't particularly sharp so what I'm going to do from here is take the walnut brown and where this is much darker. Put a little bit of this brown into this area. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back and put a little bit more of this crimson right up on this top corner because I can just see a little bit of purple up here. Just put a little glaze of that over there and into this area around this little bit of hair. Just a little glaze tiny little bit of the red coming through there as well because of course we can see a bit of the coat coming through uh, the hair that's gone over there and then what I want to do on that bit is just to put a little bit of the little bit of the white over the top just blend that a little bit I'm going to come into this bit on the top of his coat here with a little bit of orange just in places just to give again just like a little glaze on the top of his coat and that's going to help to make the the red just a little bit more sort of orangey red for me and then back in with the permanent red now you can work on these areas as much or as little as you want obviously the more we work on these areas with this fabric the more we are going to fill in the grain on the pastel mat and you'll have less grain showing and there's a bit of that orange again coming around here and then back in with the permanent red which is my sort of orangey red so whatever red that you're using that's got that orange tint to it I'm going to take my cap at Morton Violet and I'm going to go up into the darker bits of this crease and actually just blend that edge of that crease just a little bit I just want to soften that a little bit I'm going to go along this crease here and that's all I'm doing I'm just looking for the lights and the dark areas that are going to give me that contrast and they're going to form the shapes of these creases so this cap at Morton Violet comes around here we've got quite a dark crease around here and I'm using circular motions to plot these, this next crease in because I can't see any direction really. I just want a nice, even coverage. So once I've done that, I'm going to, once I've done that, I'm going to come in with the scarlet and come all the way over with the scarlet. Now it doesn't matter whether you choose to sort of plot all your creases in in a much larger area or whether you just want to just sort of work on one fold uh, like I'm working on um, at once. It, it really doesn't matter whatever's going to be better for you. Some people will find it easier to work on a much sort of larger area and plot all the creases in say on his coat and work on it all in one go and you know other people might prefer to 
work on smaller areas and it really doesn't matter. Whatever's going to be easiest. I suppose doing it this way, um, I do have to keep picking pencils, you know, up, down, up, down. Whereas if I was using the same pencil all over his coat, that would, perhaps it would be faster. I don't know. I just think this is just a nice, easy way to follow around his creases. For me, anyway, it works for me. I want to come back in with this permanent red again, which is my sort of more orange red. So I'm not really using any particularly difficult techniques to create this fabric. It's more about the observation of the reference photograph. It's more about looking at where these darker bits are and these lighter bits. And that's what creates the, the fold in the fabric. So it's about sort of observing where the lighter and the darker bits go. It's about observing the direction of some of the, the shadows. So for instance, here, as we come down this bit here, we, we need to make sure that the darker bits, they come over this way, they're sort of sweeping in curls. So I want to observe those and make sure that, you know, they are going in the right direction because they are what's gonna help shape and create the form of the fabric on his coat. And it's about getting a nice blend of colors between the lights and the dark so that we don't have sort of harsh stop start lines. We want it nice and blended. And they may look a little bit funny in isolation like this. So, you know, the creases and the fabric, it may look a little bit funny but it will come together. I'm going to come back over this again with the scarlet. And every time I go over it, I mean, I could leave it as it is. I could leave it like that. But I just want to fill the grain in a little bit more. Now, you can do as much or as little as you want here. If you feel that you've already got enough colour down on your uh, creases, you can obviously sort of move forward with the video. Or if you need a bit of time, you can pause the video. I don't want there to be too much grain showing in this area. I will have more grain showing as we come down the coat and I'll explain that as we come down the coat. But for the minute, I want to fill in as much of the, the grain as I can for the minute. There's, a, there's some marks there, you probably see that. They're just marks that are on the pastel mat. So I can either try and, you know, push a pencil down and uh, fill them in. So you see I've filled them in a little bit, but I don't I don't mind them really. I don't mind the little uh, marks on the uh, pastel mat. I just sort of work with them. But all I did to get sort of, not get rid of them, but disguise them a little bit is to just tip my pencil and just, I've just run a, a pencil down into that channel. So you can see I've disguised them a bit, but I never worry if I get marks on um, the pastel mat. I never worry with it really, you know, we can sort of disguise it. I mean, obviously those marks are quite small. If you've got a huge sort of gash across the pastel mat, that's different, but a mark that size, I don't really worry about. I'm gonna come in with that walnut brown again. I'm using the walnut brown where it's really sort of deep down in this fur direction. And if I can see some direction, I'll put it in. And if I can't, I just go back to these uh, circular strokes. I'm also going to use some of the Van Dyke brown. So where I can see that it's quite brown, but it's in the sort of pinky red areas. The Van Dyke brown is, is quite a pinky sort of brown. So I'm using that to darken down areas that perhaps a little bit more brown, not quite so. I mean, I could still use the Caput Morton violet as well a little bit, but Sometimes some of the areas are just a bit more brown, but it's a case of going with what you've got. Basically, what you're really sort of looking for is, is lights and darks. It doesn't really matter if you don't have the orange or the pink reds or, the, you know, the, the red browns or just looking for these sort of lights and darks. So go what's, whatever you've got in your pencil case, don't worry too much about it. We shall all be, um, we're probably all seeing Santa and his coat differently anyway, because you know we're all looking, whether you've got the, the Santa picture printed off at the side of you or whether you're just using it on your 
uh, your, your iPad or your computer or your phone to look at the reference photograph, we'll all have screens that are, uh, you know, sort of different, calibrated differently. So we're all going to be looking at him slightly different anyway. So, I mean, obviously you can just follow my colours to the letter or, you know, you might find that you need slightly different colours because you're seeing him differently. It really doesn't matter. I'm going to come back with this permanent orange and rather than me just keep sharpening my pencils obviously you can see there that that pencil's not that sharp I could just sharpen it but then I will obviously you know end up sort of wasting pencil so all I do is I just keep turning it and I'll keep finding a sharper bit and as I flatten that area down I'll make another sharper bit and that just saves me uh, keep sharpening my pencils I don't really um sharpen my pencils all that much really. Um, I don't often f have to empty it and I, if you bear in mind I sort of draw every day, I don't really empty out my pencil sharpener um, that often really. I can't remember the last time I emptied it actually. <laughs> but you know I'm sure there are some artists that that say that um, you know, they, they like to work with much sharper pencils and that's absolutely fine. You know, we all sort of work differently. So I'm just going over this area and as I, every sort of layer that I put down, I will be filling in a bit more grain. And you can see that graininess going. I don't mind some grain, but I don't want there to be lots of grain here. Going back in with this scarlet again. On this bottom side to deepen this. And I want to come in with some of this crimson alizarin as well. I always want to say it's, it is crimson alizarin, isn't it? I always want to say alizarin crimson. Because that's one of the colours of my, um, my watercolours. And I always just want to say alizarin crimson. So if I do say that, I mean crim... Uh, no, what do I mean? I mean crimson alizarin. <laughs> you get what I mean. And this is a crimson alizarin hue from the luminance range. So I'm just creating some darker bits here, quite sort of deep pinky red color. And I'm just applying this. This is the darkest red that I've got, apart from the cap at Autumn Violet. This is the darkest red that I've got. So this, you probably have already noticed, you've already worked it out, but this color is being applied where the, the darker side of the fold is. So this is the color that sort of blends down into the browns and the cap at Mortem. And then it's the, uh, the permanent red, which is my lightest red, um, which is sitting sort of on top of the fold where it's lighter. And then I'm adding a touch of orange to that in sections. So if I just put the orange on to show you, I'm adding a touch of the orange to just add a little bit more orange in when I need it. And the other thing that I will be doing, I'll just show you now, is I'll be taking the light flesh and where it needs a little bit of highlight on the top, I'll just be putting a little bit of this light flesh. And if you didn't have the light flesh, you could just use a bit of the beige red and perhaps with the ivory or even a bit of the cream, um, in with it, whatever you've got, whether that's ivory or cream, whatever pencil you've got. And that's just gonna give me that sort of peachy, orangey bit on the top. But as I say, none of these colors are sort of written in stone. You can just go with whatever you want to go with. I can see a little bit of crimson around where this hair is. So I'm coming in with a bit of crimson on the coat, just where this hair is here. And the other color that I want to use, just where this dark bit is here, I'm going in with a bit of Payne's Gray to tint that. And again, just let that come down to the collar, uh, let that come down to the coat rather. And your first few creases, so the first few sort of folds of material that you do, they may look a little bit strange. They may not actually look like folds, but as you move down and as you do more, these folds will 
in these creases, they will actually start to look like folds of a coat. And, you know, I can leave an area, I can come back to it and I may just sort of go and uh, add a little bit more to it, might add a bit more highlight, might add a bit more shadow. As I always say when I'm drawing, the, I, can, I can work on an area in isolation, but it's not until I see it with the rest of the areas um, as I start to build up the, the drawing that I think actually an area might need to go darker or lighter because I'm looking at that area in context then. So it could be that I need to go back in and um, make something darker again or make, a, you know, make something a little bit lighter. I'm just going to go in to this area with a tiny little bit of Payne's Grey to darken that down. That's quite a deep fold there. And we've already used the Payne's Grey, so I've got the, the Payne's Grey, so I'm going to go in with the, the Payne's Grey and just darken that down just a little bit. I'm going to start to come down onto this fold here and I'm going to use this uh, this whole area sort of, I'm going to do this whole area in one go. I'm going to start to, again I've gone back in with the Caput Morton Violet and I'm going to start to just have a look at plotting in a few bits of direction, bringing this over just a few little bits of direction, quite lightly, it doesn't have to be exact, just something to shape this section of his coat and this comes, and I am just Following, I find that when I'm plotting it in, I find following the creases, because obviously the creases are, are flowing around the fabric, I find following the creases are actually uh, quite useful. I might as well just plot this bit in whilst I'm working on it as well. And the guides are here, the guidelines are there for you to, you know, they are a guide, it's not, it's not sort of like a, a really detailed outline to colour in but the guides are certainly there to show you where the fabric which way the the fabric's going. So once I've sort of plotted in roughly where these creases are going to go in this section so this is how I would sort of uh, deal with each section. I think I've probably explained this up here, but I'll just explain it again. So what I, um, so this is how I would deal with each section. So I've chosen a section. So for this, this is gonna be my area that I'm gonna work on for the minute. I've taken the Caput Morton Violet and I've just plotted in the areas that I can see are going to be the darker bits. So the areas that are gonna be the sort of dark folds of the creases or just the bits that are gonna have shadow done that with the Caput Morton Violet. What I'm going to do from there is I'm going to take my lightest red, so not the oranges or the light flesh, but the lightest red. So in my case, it's the, uh, the permanent red. I'm taking the permanent red and I'm now just going to go over this area and just start to get some colour down on it. I go with the permanent red, which for me is like the orangey light red. I go with that one because it's easier then to put my uh, my scarlet red is, is slightly darker and, and heavier. So I put my, my scarlet red or my uh, crimson, uh, alizarin crimson on top, or crimson alizarin on top. And those colours will sit on here quite nicely. It's much easier to do that than to uh, try and work the other way from, you know, the crimson to the scarlet to the permanent red. So I'm going to get these, and this is sort of putting in the lighter areas now. So we've got the darker areas in with the Caput Mortem. I'm putting the lighter areas in with the permanent red. And then I'll go and sort of blend the two together. And create those. Those sort of darker bits for the fold and, you know, the areas that need to blend. And I do that all the way through the coat. Plot in the dark bits, plot in the creases, then go in with the lighter colour, the lightest red, and then sort of join the two, blending with the uh, the other reds that I've got. I'm going to come back in with the Caput Morton Violet and just bring these darker bits down again. 
just sort of going back over where I put it in before coming back in with some of these shapes. And then I'm going to start to come in with the scarlet red and start to sort of join up and blend the light and the darker areas now. So there's a darker bit that's coming over and off this, this real sort of dark shadow. And as I say, these creases, they can look a little bit funny because you're just sort of looking at shapes. That's all you really see on the creases. Unless you look at the bigger picture, as you start to look at the, uh, the creases themselves, you start to sort of look deeper into uh, the picture and look at the creases. They start, they're just a, a bunch of shapes really bunch of shapes and colours and you wouldn't necessarily be able to say oh that's that part of the coat well that's that part of the coat when you're looking at you know a crease in isolation or an area of the coat in isolation you've just got to draw what you see and trust what you see look for those shapes look for those values look for those darks look for those lights trust what you see trust the angles of the shapes that you're seeing and bring it together like a jigsaw and it will all come together for you at the end. And every time you put another layer on, you'll be filling that grain in a little bit more. Going back in with the permanent red, which was, is my sort of lighter orangey red. So I'm just going to concentrate on this little bit for a minute. This is the lighter bit that's going over his... Um, his arm sort of coming down off his shoulder. I'm just going to concentrate on this bit. I'll come in with a little bit of the orange here. Just to add a touch of orange into that red. And then on the bottom of this sort of fold, I'm going to come in with this crimson alizarin. And I'm just going to shape it up a little bit. Start to shape. It's sort of like coming out. It's domed, isn't it? So I'm just bringing this up and I'm going to bring it down into this darker area as well. I'm going to use this crimson alizarin and bring a bit of the darker colour over this side. Slightly darker at the top of here. And once I've got the shape of this now, like I've just said, you know, you can, you can keep going back over this as much or as little as you want. Once you've got the shape, you've got the shape. It's then up to you as to how much you want to fill in this grain. I'm going to come in with the light flesh in this area. Go over this with the light flesh. This will help to fill in the grain faster because adding the, uh, the light pencils over dark pencils on pastel mat helps you to uh, fill in the grain. Helps you to get that nice blended look. So I'm coming in with my lighter pencil. Just coming in with this crimson alizarin again. Just want to shape the bottom of this. It's like a curve in his fabric. So I just want to put this on the bottom. Let's bring in the dark a bit around here. And I'm using the walnut brown because this is really quite dark. It'll be sort of a combination of the walnut brown, the uh, Van Dyke Brown and perhaps some of the Capit Morton Violet. Okay, so you can see my formula that I'm following to create these creases and I'm just using the same formula all the way down, the plotting in the darks, putting in the lighter bits and then uh, sort of joining it together with my mid-tone colours and blending, certainly blending the lighter areas with, um, you know, the light flesh to sort of fill in the tooth of the paper and fill in that graininess. So I'm going to carry on working down this side um, of the arm. We'll come back together again as I uh, move around onto these much bigger creases around here. They're just ever so slightly different, not hugely different, but just a little bit um, different on the, uh, the arm around here. And um, I will, um, I won't show you sort of all this because it's just taking time that you don't necessarily need to see. You can just sort of work on this in your own time. Just following those principles of plotting in the darks, 
finding the lights and then bringing them together and always sort of looking for the shapes and the direction of the fabric. Uh, so I'll carry on working on this. And if you carry on working on this at your own speed and I'll meet you again when we get down here. Okay, so I'm just moving down here onto this last little bit, this cuff bit. And I've just gone through the process that I explained earlier, coming down the side of Santa's coat. I went through the dark layers, plotted out the creases with the dark layers with the cap at Mortem, then went into the permanent red to um, create some lighter areas. And then blended those two areas together, so the light and the dark areas with the uh, the scarlet and with the crimson alizarin. And then every now and again, I've just like, sort of around here, I've used some of the Van Dyke brown, I've used some of the walnut brown. In the really deep areas, I also use some of the Payne's grey. So in these deep areas here where they're really quite sort of dark, I added a bit of Payne's grey onto the Caput Mortem and onto the walnut brown, just to darken that down further. And just give more of that sort of uh, real dark sort of sepia colour. I could also use some sepia if you had sepia I could put sepia in there as well so I'm just coming down onto these bits now these bits down here we've just got slightly bigger uh, creases I've already plotted one of the creases in so I've plotted a crease in here already brought it around here this is another crease if I just show you that this time the crease well, I wanted to just come back and show you this bit because this time we have a little bit of direction on this coat so if I just plot this in gently we've got a little bit of a fleece a little bit of a fur direction here so we've got some darker bits that come over there a little bit of a fur direction here as well just where because this is a slightly close to the camera and not so blurred you can see a little bit of fur texture which is why I wanted to come back to this little bit but I think we can definitely see uh, Santa Claus or Father Christmas whatever you call him he's coming together now obviously um, I'm based in the UK and we still call uh, we, we still call Father Christmas Father Christmas really he does get called Santa or Santa Claus but we still do um, I think quite a lot refer to him as 
uh, Father Christmas. We do in our family anyway. But I'd really love, absolutely love to hear which country you're from and what you call uh, Santa Claus, Father Christmas, whatever you call him. I'd love to hear what you actually uh, call him, particularly uh, for the children. I mean, we certainly, for children, when children are around, we certainly call him Father Christmas. We probably perhaps talk of Santa as, I don't know, perhaps I did as, as my children got a bit older. I'm not really sure. We still call him Father Christmas. But um, I'd love to hear what you call uh, your Santa and which country you're from. So just put me a comment uh, below and tell me uh, which country you're from and what you call Santa. It'd be absolutely lovely to to um, to find out what you what you call him and also you know whether you have any Christmas traditions um, for us on Christmas Eve as a family when the children were younger and we're probably still going to do it this year as well even though they're they're much older. On Christmas Eve, we like to have hot chocolate and we like to watch the Polar Express. I, I think Polar Express is one of my favourite uh, films. So we'll undoubtedly watch the Polar Express with hot chocolate on Christmas Eve, even though the children are not children anymore. And that's what we'll do. Love to watch uh, the Polar Express. The other thing that I like to do every year is to just watch just about every version of a Christmas Carol that I can find, whether that's old versions, new versions, cartoon versions, the uh, the stories, the audio books. I absolutely um, love to uh, listen to all of the versions of Christmas Carol. That's just something that I like to do. The rest of the family doesn't really join in with that. But if you've got any traditions that you do at Christmas, then do drop me a comment and let me know because I'd love to hear how you celebrate Christmas and um, and what you call your Santa or Father Christmas or whatever you call him. So I'm just adding a little bit of the Caput Mortem into this area here. The one thing that comes up uh, with the pastel mat, it, there are all sort of little marks all over the pastel mat and it's just part of the texture of the pastel mat. And I find that for this sort of lovely plush velvety coat all these little marks in the pastel mat they actually do work at creating lovely bits of texture so um, I've left those in I'm not worried about sort of trying to cover over those I quite like the texture so I'm happy to I'm happy to leave those in and happy to probably have slightly fewer layers around here so that we have this lovely, um, let the grain work for you really, just let the grain come through and it just shows a bit of texture in Santa's coat. I'm just going into directional strokes around here to add a few directional strokes right on the edge of this fur, bringing that up so that you can see some of this fur texture on the top. And then I'm just bringing over this crease. That's quite a dark crease in there. Bringing over this way, down into this crease, still just looking for these lights and darks. I'm gonna come into this area with the light flesh 10%. As I said earlier, when we were working on an earlier part of his coat, using the lighter colour over these layers will help to blend and fill in a little bit of the little bit of the, the texture, the teeth. Gonna come in with the Payne's grey and make this nice and dark in here. This is a really dark crease. When I get to this bit on the end, I'm just going to flick those strokes up in the direction that the fur's going in. I'm going to come into 
this area as well. I might as well work on all this area together. Now there's obviously quite a deep sort of crease there and I'm using, rather than using the circular um, strokes that I would have probably used to plot these sorts of creases out, I'm using little directional strokes. I'm also using little directional strokes to plot out this crease. So this crease sort of comes over there a little bit this bit, this bit that comes along here, it actually comes around and sort of joins up. So it actually comes around a little bit like that if I just sort of zig, um, dash that in. Hopefully you can see that. So just like before, I'm going to go into this area with it's like a bit of a base layer, really. When I get to the edge, though, I am going to go into almost like a little directional stroke. I want my pencil to sort of start on the inside and flick out towards the edge of the coat because it's on the, the last little flick on the edge of the pencil that you will get a nice little wispy bit. I don't want any blunt edges on the end. Let's build up a little bit of fur texture. You can see that we're just building up a bit of fur texture here. And then I'll go back to circular strokes in this bit. So I can use circular strokes where it's sort of deeper on the crease. You probably just saw me use circular strokes there. But then as I get to the top again, I'm just going to switch to these uh, little directional strokes. Again, I'm going to use a circular uh, stroke right sort of deep down in the crease here. And then as we come out of the crease, I'm going to use... And I will tidy this edge up a little bit again. Once I've put in the fur here and once I've put in this cuff, I'll be able to just tidy this up a little bit. So we will come back and tidy that edge. I've just sharpened my pencil and that way I can add a little bit more texture. So this time I want to come out of this crease and I want to sort of come over in little curls. So it looks as if I've got texture on this bit, this little sort of fold here and just bring in just dragging that edge down just dragging that line down and if you do have the granite rose and if you don't that's absolutely fine if you do have the granite rose just a couple of little bits of texture here and there with the granite rose which is the pinky color you could of course use the uh, the beige red from the polychromos. One thing I did do uh, just whilst I was um, sort of coming down here, uh, I just added a little bit of Payne's grain to here. You can just see a bit of Payne's grain there just to darken that down. Okay, so I think we've got a uh, collar down on his sleeve that I'm quite happy with. Like I say, you could um, carry on, you know, if you feel that you need to go further, you could carry on. That's absolutely fine. Um, I, I, I'm quite happy with where we are now for this tutorial. The only other thing that I'm just doing is I'm taking a kneadable eraser and I just shape it into a pencil and I'm just going to very, very gently just drag it over some of the highlights. And I mean really gently to just drag it over a couple of these highlights. And what happens is it's just going to pick up some of the, uh, the pigment off the end of the pastel mat. But it's just helping a little bit of this sort of grainy uh, texture um, come through. The other thing that if you do want to just add a little bit more grain to, you know, a little bit more texture to yours is just to dab it in places. So I'm going to leave this here. I think we've just about done his coat. Obviously, you know, carry on working on it if you feel that you want to. I'll be back again tomorrow. We're going to look at his collar here, bringing his beard over and his uh, cuff on his uh, wrist. I think we'll get onto that. We'll definitely do this bit and I think we'll come on to that. So I'll leave it there. Like I say, please do uh, drop me a comment and let me know which country you're from and let me know what you call Santa. That would be absolutely super. And if you have any Christmas traditions that you'd like to share with us, I'd love to hear about those as well. So I will leave it there. Please don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you've enjoyed the tutorial so far. Don't forget to subscribe and I really look 
forward to seeing you in the next part of the tutorial. Thanks very much. Bye for now.